6,668. That's the number of Nigerians who were stranded in Libya but have voluntarily returned home between February 2016 and December 6, 2017. Week by week and month by month, they arrive aboard an aircraft, though most of them departed by road on a route popularly known as the Libya route. Among this latest arrival is 28-year-old Gafar Tunde from Oyo State, who lived in Libya for about a year. After training as an air conditioner technician in Ghana, he returned to Nigeria, but according to him, there was no headway in Ibadan, where he worked. So he decided the Libya route offered a good escape. Gafar narrates his experience in Yoruba. Uh, normally, I agree with him, I tell you, I was about 50,000 naira. I was introduced by a friend to those who planned this journey. I was charged 150,000 naira, but paid 100,000 naira, with a promise to pay the rest when I got to Tripoli. I traveled from Ibadan to Kanu, Kanu to Agadez, through the desert. The desert experience was horrible. I survived the desert and finally arrived in Gatron. I went ahead to Musu. There you can't communicate with anyone. The asthma boys will always come around to steal from blacks. If the boys came and you could not provide money, they either injured or stabbed the person. Gafar's ordeal forced him out of Musu to another town where he got a job at a car wash and then a food canteen where he had to do the job of five people. The threat to his life later made him consider the option of crossing to Europe. Gafar is not the only one with a tail. This 29-year-old man from Delta State embarked on this journey due to what he calls the hope of a more meaningful existence. All the money that I work in Libya, the bad boys in Libya, the police in Libya stitch up it like that. For the young women, it's a mixed experience. When I started the journey, I started with my own money, so 150,000. So when I got to uh, Libya, Saba, so they told me that I've not paid my money throughout. So I decided to call my brother because Libya, if you don't pay your money, they will take you to go and do maybe ask get work. While many claim economic prosperity or lack of it is responsible for their putting their life through the desert, it's a risk that should be avoided. Even if they go, they will be returned. Some of them are not even returned alive. Some of them are lost forever. In the coming days, the country expects more voluntary returnees. And while that exercise lasts, the route to Europe via Libya must be made unattractive to young Nigerians. In doing that, government at all levels have their job cut out for them, just as the experience of these returnees should drive the lesson home for intending migrants. Welcome back. That matter of the refugees, Nigerian refugees in Libya and indeed in other areas, conflict torn areas, has been um, has been, been a sore point this a year. A sore Let's point, like indeed, that. real sore point. And then came became more more than the front burner when it came up in the news media across yeah. the world about the slave trade going the on pictures there. Of, the uh, pictures uh, were gory. gory and you're hearing people yeah. what they were going through together. Well, to help us look at this matter, we have in the legal studio Dr. Dakbo Thomas, Foreign Affairs Analyst and a lecturer at the Department of History and International Studies, Lagos State University. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And from our Abuja studios, we have Dr. Tokwe Elias Fatile, spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Fatile. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's just start out with an overview of the Nigeria's um, foreign relations in the year 2017. What would you say it's been like? I think the question is directed at me, is it? Yes. Yes. Go on, please. Uh, OK. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's been very robust at uh, the different levels. When we talk about foreign relations, you talk about 
for example, bilateral relations with the countries that we have uh, missions abroad, where we have missions abroad. Also talk about uh, multilateral relations with uh, international organizations like United Nations, African Union, even ECOWAS, and so on and so forth. Uh, so indeed, this year has been very eventful for the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and it's been a year that has been full of activities and uh, great engagements uh, with our foreign counterparts at a different level. Would you say this, these relations as they've been so far have been in line with the Nigeria's foreign policy? Dr. Fatile? Dr. Fatile, we're talking about so, Nigeria's foreign policy direction and whether some of the policies that we've seen this year are in line with that, if you heard the question correctly. Yes, I'm just about here. It appears there's a breakage uh, of... Uh, is. All right, the okay. question... Can I hear you again? The question, once again, uh, my colleague was trying to put to you, is um, Nigeria's foreign policy and the direction that we're going in the year 2017, moving into 2018, are we moving at, at, at the rate we should be moving in terms of our foreign partners and, and other countries? Yes, I have just uh, responded that we are really doing fine at uh, the different levels. Um, at the level of the United Nations, for example, you will have been following some of the things we've been doing. This year, Nigeria won an election into the, as the president of the uh, Human Rights Council based in uh, Geneva. And uh, if you would be following some of the development here in Nigeria, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we had a series of uh, bilateral commissions uh, with uh, some of our relations, some of our um, counterparts. For example, there was the U.S. Nigeria Binational Co uh, Commission, there was the uh, Ethiopian Nigerian Binational Commission, we also had the Gulf of Guinea Commission, and so on and so forth.